Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pastor Joseph, pastor of the Lighthouse Ministries in Los Angeles. Uh, welcome you back to another hour with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where he has his word and his gospel designed with our souls and minds. So welcome to all who are in Christ and perhaps at least perhaps one that may not have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord on this point of their life. And perhaps after this hour, they would have crossed over and joined a wonderful and prestigious club known as the Body of Christ. I was unable to attend last week due to some technical uh, challenges here at the station, but I am happy to be back and uh, raring to go in our uh, journey, uh, being thankful. Uh, we started it uh, back uh, a couple of weeks back uh, with the story on Hannah, and then we went into Psalms 9, and uh, today we'll be embarking on what it is to be thankful as we journey in the Gospel of Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19 and it's the story of the uh, healing of 10 leopards simultaneously by jesus christ luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19 i'm gonna do a quick prayer now and i like everyone to keep in mind uh, and in prayer I, i'm had the privilege of meeting a little young boy, maybe about six years old. His name was Robbie, and his mother's name was Shiloh. And uh, I watched him. He's had had a physical challenge since he was born, and he uses a special walker. And I watched him coming out of the school, uh, and he had such a glow and such a smile as he walked. He had more of a glow than the kids that didn't have walkers. <laughs> And I had walked over, I watched him go down the, down the road to the car with his moms. And I went over there and she enlightened me about a special challenge he had. But he just has this amazing glow and smile. And I told her I would keep him in prayer and put him in prayer on the radio. Uh, and hopefully anyone else that's listening will pray for him and his family as well. Because we all have challenges. And uh, sometimes in praying... We can bless others, and the Lord blesses us as well. So um, I'm thankful to have come across that little story because it helped me to look at my life and appreciate even more the little things that the Lord has blessed me with. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful, Lord, for this opportunity, Father. We're thankful for your word that has not only brought life to those who've accepted Christ, but guides us in this life onto the next. And while journeying here, assist us to help others to come to this thing called life in Christ. We pray, Father, for all those that are afflicted without Christ right now, that there may be one that may say at this hour, what must I do to be saved? And they hear that it is by faith in Jesus uh, willing uh, and sacrificial death on the cross and early rising on the third day for their hope. We pray, Father, for Robbie and Shiloh. Uh, you bring the healing that's needed for that child who has this enormous glow. And I could see in the spirit calling upon his life, O oh Lord. Um, you can take him from uh, that walker, Father, to helping others walk, uh, those that are lame, Father, in the world, to help them to walk straight forth in Christ Jesus, Father. So we pray for him and all the kids, Father, in this world. We pray for the challenges in this world, Father. We pray for those, O oh Lord, that are in positions to help, and most importantly, for those that need the help, especially Christ Jesus, Father. We pray, O oh Lord, for the body of Christ, O oh Lord, that in these challenging whirlwind times, uh, they can continue being led, God, and directed by the Holy Spirit to bring you glory, Lord, the glory that you seek. And that is to be used, O oh Lord, 
to plant and water that you may reap the harvest, O Lord, which is all due to you, because all glory is yours. We pray, Father, that you open <clears throat> you open up our ears, incline them, Father, prepare our minds and hearts, O Lord, that we can hear and be enriched with what you have to feed us on this day for our spirit, that we may further put to subjection and crucifixion our uh, flesh on this day and moving forward throughout the week. We pray over the word, Father, speak to us, Father, in a special way. Lift us up, Father, to that next level. And not only having faith in your, your, your beloved Son for our salvation, but to take up our walk to another level, to be willing to further deny ourselves, to follow and serve you, O Lord, and you alone. And this we pray in the name of Jesus and say, Amen, Amen. Um, Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19 um, we have an account here of this is now the third and final year in Jesus' ministry uh, down here and um, it says that he's coming down uh, Luke 9 5 1 it spoke about how he was uh, gearing up for uh, the journey down to Jerusalem. And we see now that he is slowly in motion leaving the northern territory of Galilee and concluding that ministry up there. And uh, he's in the midst between there and Samaria. And Samaria, we know, has played a special uh, role in Jesus' ministry down here because we have seen how uh, in John 4 we saw the greatest evangelical account uh, between him and the woman at the well and John uh, what is that uh, not John in uh, Luke chapter 10 we've seen this, the account of the good Samaritan um, and we were dealing with that uh, in our Christian caregiving segment uh, in September and October, we've seen uh, um, how even in Samaria there was an account where the people did not welcome Jesus for whatever reason. It was a certain village, and how James and John <laughs> wanted to uh, rain fire down upon them, but nonetheless, Jesus had mercy because he came with grace. Um, so we see some accounts, and we also see down the road after this, um, in the further points, we saw uh, how in the Great Commission in Acts 1-8, uh, Samaria is specifically mentioned after Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the rest of the world. So there's a, a special connection with Jesus and Samaria, and it shows us that we in today's society that are not of Israel, being Gentile, fall into this category here you know he came specifically for those that were uh, not of Israel as well and we see that here right now and as he is journeying uh, it says in verse 11 and it came to pass as he went towards Jerusalem as we're talking about that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood far off. <clears throat> now, uh, leprosy, the first thing we want to encounter, uh, speak about is that it had been well over, I believe, 1,500 years since the last account of uh, leprosy ever even being cured I believe don't quote me I believe that was the segment with Elisha I'm not sure but I believe that's where that was and it's about almost 1500 years ago um, but it was incurable by man and um, there was an account in Jesus's first year of ministry which is maybe let's say a year and a half two years before this where he came across a leopard and it said that he touched him and he healed them. Now, as a rabbi or a teacher, one of a priestly nature, you were never to come into physical contact with a leper 
uh, or, you know, a, someone that was dead. Um, but Jesus not only healed him with that touch, but had no effect on him because he is the one that's giving the healing. He is not the one that's uh, uh, dealing with an affliction. He's curing our affliction. So one reason that I bring this up is because in this time, Jesus had throngs of people that were following him everywhere he went. And many of them, yes, they were looking to be healed of their infirmities or family or friends that were in need of it. They brought them along. Uh, they were looking to hear. They were looking for uh, some new hope. They were looking for, is he the one? But the trail that he had been leaving up to this point was enormous because in John 1, we see that he had already uh, done many signs and wonders and, 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 and uh, healed many along the way um so we don't have the full account because as i said in the end of john if we did who could really hold this i mean it's just an endless stream of what jesus did on a day in and day out basis but word got around they didn't have internet they didn't have cell phones they didn't have house phones but word got around just like in today's time of anything and everything that jesus did and his popularity at times was just rising like a volcano just rising up up and up and um you got to imagine that these men had heard about that healing prior with that other leopard and um it says that they met he met 10 of them at the same time who stood afar now if depending on the weather it was uh noted that uh you could stand as a leopard about six feet away from a person but if it was on a windy day they estimated up to about maybe 150 feet away and here we see that it says it stood far off it doesn't give the approximate distance but we know that uh they were in the boundaries of the law with regards to leprosy and they did their, their due diligence and um Leprosy, uh, like we said, was incurable. Um, it had three points. Uh, one, it separated you. Um, it made you an outcast and one that was pretty much forgotten. One that was looked down at and one that was disconnected from mainstream America. And we see that a lot and what they call tent city or the skid row sectors of uh, society today where you see them, you know, but how many of us really are engaging with them on a day in and day out basis as we do with friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, uh, not that many. Um, so they were, uh, they know that they're human beings, they know that they're flesh, but they, they see the constant people of back and forth going about their lives and they uh you know it's got to hurt you know i gotta say this has got to hurt to be in this world and be treated like you're really not of this world you're not part of this world you you can't be connected to us because of your circumstance you are an endangerment to us we're seeing kind of glimpses of that with this covid situation um so uh, leprosy would separate you and it will also isolate you um you know the footsteps of someone with leprosy it was kind of dark because you know knowing that there was no cure um a lot of israel pretty much all of israel looked down upon them as the hand the finger of god was against them for some apparent reason in their life there was some sin factor in their life that brought this upon them um so you know waking up as a leper i mean the only thing you could pretty much stare down ahead it's not hope the only thing you could stare down ahead is death i mean when it's you're falling apart physically it's agonizing, it's excruciating, it's a lot of suffering. Um, you know, they said that 
you know, the cool areas of a body, I believe it's fingers and, 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 and toes would uh, become susceptible to being numb, you know, such as what sin will do to mankind against God. It will numb us, give us a numbing effect. And they have to wrap those areas very, very thickly as well as their face because laying down in the outskirts of society, uh, you know, they were susceptible, they were, uh, susceptible to rodents just coming by and gnawing at their, uh, at their toes and at their fingers, and they wouldn't feel anything because at that point, leprosy would give you such a numbness, you wouldn't feel those specific areas. Um, so it was pretty dreadful um, to look at this is your life. Um, you, you can't connect to what you used to have. Uh, it doesn't look, there's no hope. Um, there's no one down here that can help me. I mean, at least in today's time, you can get some form of prescription for pain. There was nothing back then that's going to help this situation. Um, so death was pretty much something that a lot of them pretty much welcomed and looked forward to, to get out of the agony of the suffering. Um, and, uh, the sad thing about it is if they ever had to come into any part of society, uh, they'd have to go through a humiliating, uh, process of yelling from a far distance, unclean, unclean. In other words, uh, to let people know that this dreaded disease, uh, not human being, this dreaded disease is in the proximity and you have to take safety. Uh, not come give me a hug, not come give me an embrace, not come hold me and sit down with me and walk alongside of me and, and chew the fat with me, uh, not come over there and, ha and sit down with me and do a prayer and uh, uh, read some scripture, have some time with the fellowship with the Lord, just take cover. Um, they had a section, I believe they said in the, uh, at the temple where uh, they, it was a lot of just for them, no one else. Uh, so it's pretty sad that you're here in this, in this world, but like you can't even, you can't function. At least us Christians, you know, they says we are in the world, but not to be of it. We can flow through mainstream America uh, and society, but these individuals, for the for the most part, were disconnected from it. So they were separated, isolated, and then they were truly devastated um, because the leprosy, uh, like we spoke about, not only destroyed and ruined them physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, um, but it tore them apart from their life. I mean, you know, family, you know, spouses, kids, neighbors, their coworkers, you know, uh, their fellow Israelites, you know, the promises, the covenantal promises that were given uh, through the forefathers, uh, they were utterly disconnected from this. I mean, because it was known, like we said, that if you had this, it had to have been something that was going on between you and God that displeased God. For the most part, that's how they looked at it. So, and it'd been about 1500 years, but they know that there was someone in the midst of their life now, a couple of years back that had been healed of leprosy. And here comes the one that uh, was responsible for it in their midst. They see him coming in and they met him, um, but respectfully afar uh, uh, off. And in verse 13, it says, they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Well, the first thing we notice is that we said, they knew who was coming. Okay? Uh, this was their Zacchaeus moment. You know, we see Zacchaeus when uh, it was noted as Jesus' triumphal entry when he was coming down the road. Zacchaeus was short physically, so he wouldn't be able to look over the people. So they said he climbed a sycamore tree to, to get a glimmer of Jesus. Well, this is their Zacchaeus moment. You know, healing and deliverance is getting ready to come by. And there's two things that they are not going to get back if they uh, lay idle. And that's time 
an opportunity. The time was now, as it is, as the Lord has me sharing this. The time is now to get right with the Lord. He is coming in the midst of your life through this message, wherever you are in internet land or radio land. He is in the midst because he says he stands at the midst of your, of your life every second of your life, knocking at the door of your heart and j just waiting for you to open it up and say welcome and, 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 and invite him into your life as your personal savior and, and make him Lord of your life. Um, so this is their opportunity. This is their Zacchaeus type opportunity. Here he comes. We see it. And they didn't wait. This is an interesting thing. They did not wait. And the Bible doesn't say as Jesus passed them up. They, they didn't wait for a pass me up situation. How many of us, uh, today is Sunday, uh, did a pass me up on going to service today? Uh, you know what? I'll catch Jesus next time. Well, these individuals said, no, no, no. This ain't going to be a pass me up situation. This is going to be a, a red flag could you stop first situation? And the way that you get Jesus' attention, first of all, acknowledge who he is. Because that's what they did. They acknowledged who he was. Jesus and the utter respect of master. Now, this is their worst point in their life. How many of us suffering right now dreadfully beyond anything else we've ever encountered in our life could do what these individuals are doing. You can do it right now. You, you, Jesus is in your midst. He is in your midst right now and speaking to you in the midst of your life right now. And no matter how dreadful it is right now, could you call out the name above all names to start the engine of change. And they said, Jesus, master. Okay? And when you call upon Jesus, what's your need? What is it that you're looking for when you call Jesus? Well, the Lord has me here on this podium to, uh, not podium, but this little, this little, uh, this little room here uh, to speak a big message. And, you know, when we call for Jesus, we should be calling to be saved, to have our soul saved by the Lord Jesus Christ so we can have peace with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can learn and grow in his peace, experience his peace, and pass that on to others that they may come to peace. Jehovah Shalom, Jesus Christ. And experience eternal peace after this life. So it said that uh, when they got Jesus' attention by calling out, acknowledging him as master, you know, we know that's the Lord. Have mercy upon us. Because there's one thing that Israel did, and that is talk, just like we do. We got more gossip flying around this world through this internet and phone lines than ever before. So rumors, reputations, conversations, gossip, it just spreads in a nanosecond. And they knew that Jesus was about mercy. He was about compassion. He was about coming to those that the world basically looked down at and cast it off and wanted no part to do with. That's who Jesus came from. And he said, I have come for those that are in need of a physician, not those that are well. He's coming for those that need and want and hunger and thirst. As he said, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. That he can fill them to an overflow, that they be a fountain of continuously living water to help others along the way. So, mercy is what he's looking for. And they know that there were other accounts where individuals sought out mercy before the Lord and the Lord healed and delivered them. And they have the cream of the crop in their resume when they see their leper 
just about a year to, uh, and a half to two years ago that was healed. One of their own, okay? The same affliction healed instantaneously by Jesus Christ. So, um, verse 14, okay? Now, when you call out for Jesus and you get his attention and you, uh, you know, uh, uh, let him know what you're looking for, uh, be ready for a response. Be ready for a response. And this right here, um, when he saw them, when Jesus saw them, okay, he said, now, uh, he said unto them, go, show yourself unto the priest. Now, this is a real interesting thing for a lot of uh, preachers and teachers and scholars. Uh, in the account with the, the leper in Luke 5, said he touched him, okay? And now, nowhere here are these guys complaining. Hey, hold on. What are you telling us? Just go. Wait a minute. What happened? Our homie got touched. You know, you, you show some extra, you show some love. You threw out some sugar. You know, you you you, you gave him a, a, you gave him the love. You telling us to just go, walk, leave? Where, where we going? He ain't giving us no map, no G, no GPS. Just just go. Oh, okay. Go to the priest. Okay, so you you tell us where to go and show ourselves. Okay. Still a leper. What am I supposed to tell him? Jesus sent me here, and I'm a leper. What, what, what? The priest is supposed to validate that I'm not a leper no more. He's telling me to leave as a leper. How many of us have come to Jesus Christ? And prayed and sought out something, and the Lord speaks to you and just tells you go. And you're looking around like, oh, oh, oh okay, this is an Abraham moment. Just go. I'm gonna I'm 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 get you there. You know, just like he did with the uh, uh, a centurion soldier. And he just told him go. And he said, live. Okay. You know. Um, here we go now, just like the account with the Samaritan woman that came to him and pleading for her, her daughter, and he basically just told it at the end with her humility and her faith that she had, uh, that wow, Jesus, you know, she'll live, she'll be all right. Well, wait a minute, don't you want to come check? Uh, you know, uh, maybe I ought to bring her over here? Or, or can you stay still so I can go check and see and come back? It was none of that. When you come to Christ by faith, and I mean faith, not just you, you want you get you want to look, this is what I want. No, you come in by faith and, and you're and you're and you're, and you're hurting and you recognize he is the one. Now you're just not coming like it's a slot machine. Okay? You recognize who Christ is and you're pouring yourself out to him. Okay. Look what Jesus will do. When the Lord responds to your request, are you ready to take that first step? Most of us pray, and a lot of us will get maybe not what we want, but what we need, and we do nothing. Some of us get what we want, and we still don't do nothing, or we don't do right, okay? If it's the Lord blessing us, what do we get back, you know? So, in this segment of being thankful, continuing on, um, Jesus just simply said, go. There's no touching. There's no sitting down and hard knocking. Just simply said, go. Show yourselves unto the priest. Okay, now, one thing I can say about these guys when they left, they had to have been somewhat in Scripture because the priest would have to go through a serious cleansing process, I mean, a ritual to declare you, in fact, delivered from leprosy. I can only imagine when they got there, you know, like, it's not one. He said ten. And they had not nowhere in their time in, in, in Jerusalem, okay, there had been no priest that had that dealt with validating a, 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 a leper that was healed, okay? We know the one back a couple of years back. But you're sending throngs now, okay? Well, you know what? What he was basically saying... What he was basically doing was sending a message to Israel, your Messiah is here. 
what no man can do, but only God could do, is in the midst of your life. It is here. Okay? He sent them so many messages as he does to us. So many clues. Okay? So many pivotal moments in our life where we get a message that the Lord is calling us. The Lord wants that fellowship and relationship with us. But he has to get us right through Christ. And we just keep ignoring it. We just keep ignoring it. And these men went. Okay? I'd have to allude that, you know, when he said to the priest, they kind of knew somewhat what, they, what was going on. But scripture doesn't give an account. Okay? Um, you'll see in a moment why I say this. Um, and it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. Okay? Now, I, I, I thought of a, of, of a humorous moment here where, you know, we know that nine of them were Jews and the other was a Samaritan. You know, the Lord puts opposites and attracts them. How do we know? We were opposite in every way, in any and every way, in mind, thought, speech, and I mean, in speech, thought, and deed against God as sinners. Okay, we were opposites. And through Christ, we became one in that attraction and that fellowship with our Father. And I got a thought like, you know, wow, as they were walking and they started seeing this change, it doesn't say if it was instantaneous or it was step by step, gradual, but when they came to realize they were, <laughs> one was a Samaritan and the others were Jews, imagine what that might have been like. But it said that the nine Jews kept going. And the reason I speak about they had to have some kind of inwardness about scripture with regards to going to the priest. Here we see the Jews kept going. Uh, they were symbolic of going back like Lot's wife. Going, the heart was still in the old life. And also with these Jews, it was symbolic for what Israel basically did. They just rejected him. No matter what he did, what he produced in signs and wonders... As their Messiah, the one that was spoken of that's coming through the scriptures, they just, like we do today, utterly just pass them up, let them go by, ignore it. It, it just has no effect, you know. And, um, but this one, this one, okay, that turned, he's symbolic for true salvation, a true salvation seeker. He left after the most glorious moment in his life of a blessing from God. He, he didn't turn to that old life. He, something happened in the footsteps of this individual's life. And, you know, like we said, it's been about 1,500 years, you know, and if you go... Down the line of some snippets, we see in his first year of ministry, Jesus, we know he touched the leopard. He healed a paralytic that was in the bed. In his second year, there was another paralytic by the pool in John 5. There was one that his hand was withered, and on the Sabbath he healed. But you know what? It also symbolic of what leprosy could do. It paralyzes and it withers you away. Just as a sinner is paralyzed in his sins and withering away to a land called death. Uh, he healed the centurion soldier slave as we spoke about. He lifted up uh, the widow in Nain, in the city of Nain, uh, on their way to bury their son. He resurrected him, lifted him up. He told the disciples of John the Baptist when he was imprisoned uh, to give him some further assurance. He's, he's healed and delivered the blind, lame, deaf, dead, and even the leopards, okay? Um, he raised Jairus' as a synagogue leader, his daughter, uh, when she was fading away. He touched, he touched the leper in his first year, and his second year is that he touched two blind men. He healed Legion, the one that was plagued with tens of thousands of demons, okay, with a spoken word, okay? In year three, which is uh, where we're pretty much at right now, he had touched a blind man, okay? 
He had uh, healed one that was born blind. He fed the 5,000 miraculously. He fed the 4,000 miraculously. In between that, uh, we see the account with the Samaritan's woman for her daughter. And also, he had healed many who came. To, and there wasn't even a number that they gave on that. Okay? So, we see that Jesus has come into this land. Uh, they called out. Just like blind Bartimaeus did when he he they called he called out for Jesus Christ and um, nine leave and they continue on to see the priest and one you know when the Lord does something I mean this is the greatest blessing in your life it's a a pivotal moment in your life where you're sunk in darkness disparity. And, and then you, you just see death. There's no hope, okay? And all of a sudden, there's a turnaround blessing that comes into your life, okay? And you see it as you, the scripture says, we walk by faith, not by sight. As he walked by faith, not looking around at his body by sight, okay? He was healed, okay? But something happened. He couldn't go forward to the priest because I guess in his heart of heart he realized I've met the king priest. I've met the priest, the high priest, all with capital letters, okay, as it speaks of in Hebrews 11. He's our high priest, okay, and he's in touch with all our infirmities. He knows he can connect. He can feel. He can sympathize and empathize. And all that had that just exploded in his mind and in his, in his heart wanted to respond. When you get saved from Jesus Christ, there has to be an astounding response. Not that brings attention to yourself, but it's an upward response as we'll see aimed at God because you realize that you didn't deserve this remember leprosy was looked at as the finger of God against you something had gone wrong okay and they were spending their lives here just surviving to a bucket called death okay and all of a sudden a second chance comes. That's what Jesus is. He's a second chance that we don't deserve. Is he? He's another chance, another opportunity that we do not deserve. And a lot of things had to have been going on in this guy's mind, okay? And in his heart, it, it was just an eruption that needed to come out. Like Jeremiah said, uh, I think it's Jeremiah 20, where he said he tried to hold back the word of God. He didn't want to speak about it, didn't want to minister it no more. But it was in his heart like a burning fire. He, no matter how much he tried to hold it back, he couldn't. He was having a Jeremiah-esque moment where it had to come out, okay? I had to cut. It had to come out, okay? And it says he turned back because three things. First, he realized something. There was a sudden awareness and an appearance in the midst of his life that was a, a, a clear understanding of his situation. It's like he went from the he went from the old black and white TV days, okay, with the big jimongous antennas and the slightest little thing that can just interrupt the, 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 the clarity of the picture. He went from a black and white TV way back when they first started TVs to 8K. HDR uh, smart TV that we have today that you can speak to the TV. You get the you get such a clarity like it feels like you just walk into the TV. He had that kind of an uh, of awareness and appearance of clarity of the situation, and it stirred up something in his heart where it's described as the Lord gave me an impact. Okay, to immediately respond to his healing, it was something that just overwhelmed him to the point he had to respond he had to let out what was in his heart when you got saved did you have this moment and if you've had this moment 
as it continued to be a Psalms 34 moment. I will bless. I will praise. I will be thankful. I will worship. I will give. I will surrender. I will be at your will all the time. And that thankfulness will continue to flow from my heart. That's what's happening here. Okay. So he, he realized it clear. He had an 8K HDR clarity and it stirred up and erupts and that had to come out. But look what he did. He could have sang along the way to the priest. Okay. He could have kept going with the other nine. Okay. You know, I bet if he had a cell phone or internet, he'd have been calling and, 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 and texting and who knows, chat chat with everybody along the way. But his life did not matter no more because he realized he got a new life. He's got a newness in his life that came in and has given him a new way of thinking, a new way of walking, a new way of responding in this life. And he realized that I owe it all to my master, Jesus Christ. I owe it all to the one that I know is from God. So in knowing that he's from God and I got blessed through Jesus, then that means in knowing that he's from God, it had to have been that God himself sent that blessing through Christ aimed with my first name and last name in mind. And that's what Jesus Christ is all about. It's personal. Your first and your last. He came for you specifically. Okay? And he realized this. And then part two is he replayed. Uh, you know, in sports, you know, most people watch sports today of any sort. A lot of sports, main sports now have what they call instant replay. Okay? Um... And the instant replay is designed that when there's something that happens in the game and one side says, yeah, no, no, this is a good call. And the other side says, no, nah, this went wrong. The referees will call up to the booth and, and, they'll, and they'll have the referees play it back. Okay. And the playback is designed to make the right call. Okay. They slow down as they look back at the situation. Now, mind you, he's he, he's walking, okay? He's got this emphatic deliverance and, of, and healing and deliverance, okay? And choo, rather than choosing to go back to the old uh, de destination, yeah, to get the approval from the priest, he realizes, hey, hold on. That's the high priest. That is the priest. He did something that them priests down there couldn't do for me all my life. I went down there, okay? I had to sit in a special area with lepers, but... Couldn't none of them priests, religious leaders, scribes, Pharisees, even a high priest do nothing for me, okay? But in a blink blink, uh, I'm healed? Why am I going back to that life? And that's what the Lord is teaching us. Why do we go back to the old life after we got saved? Why do we, uh, why are we so hell bent on incorporating an old life that Jesus delivered us from into the new life of holiness and purity and righteousness in him. It don't mix. Okay? And he realized that. It's, I got to give up one to turn to the other. Well, I'm all in here. Okay? So, he replayed it and, and, and slow, he slowed it down. He deeply and completely analyzed the situation. And it was a no-brainer. He had all the details to get like they do in the sports, to get to the heart and the truth of the play, of the situation, to make the right call. And when he replayed everything back, okay, he realized something. He had a Psalms 51 David moment, okay? David replayed, and after he reviewed his situation, okay, he realized he became spiritually aware and acknowledged and accepted full accountability. And by faith, he pleaded to seek for forgiveness via his confession and repentance to the Lord. Okay, look how I started. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness and thy tender mercies. Blot out all my transgressions. Boy, that, that's heavy right there. 
Okay, you pouring out your soul of guilt before the Lord. Okay, and after he replayed and had his David Psalm 51 moment here, he said, hold on. I got part one, okay, for the physical, but I still got some leprosy inside in the spiritual that I need to deal with. And, and I know that them priests, all the way up to the high priest down there, can only help me once per year, the Day of Atonement. I want to get right with God. I want peace with God, okay? And he showed me today that he's called me. He's looking for me, okay? He came to me. He came for me. I need to respond. So he realized, he replayed, and then he said, I got to repay. He went from realized, he, he replayed, and now he got to repay. So what did he do? Okay. It says here, uh, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, glorified God. Okay, and he fell down, verse 16, on his face at his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks, being thankful. And he was a Samaritan, a Gentile like us. Okay, so he realized when he was on his way, okay, after the healing and the deliverance, and he replayed it and he realized, I got the healing for the physical. Many of us come to God for the physical. And we think because we got this bougie, bougie life and everything's rolling right, okay, it's right and tight that me and God got this special thing going. Uh, uh, he knows my heart. Or we homies. Hogwash. This man right here got the same thing you got, okay? He got the bling, bling blessing of his life, okay? Now, this blessing will enable him to go roll and stroll back into the old life and do how he was before. But he realized after replaying it, after he realized and replayed, he realized, hold on. That's the outside. And the outside going to fade away. I need to get right with my God in my soul. And can't no priest down here do that for me. Okay? He can share. Okay? But guess what? I got to make this, this is a personal thing. And, and Jesus Christ is a personal thing, okay? So he repaid, he, he decided to turn back because after he replayed, he said, I got to repay, okay? I got to give back what is owed. Now we know grace is marvelous. It's beyond our comprehension how God will bless us who do not deserve his blessing. We didn't deserve to be woken up. We didn't deserve to have what we have. Okay? We, we didn't earn it. And we can't pay it back. But this repayment, it's not a physical repayment. It's a spiritual repayment. And he's teaching us something here. Okay? We got to get away from thinking that because we're dropping the money in the bucket... We, we please in God. Didn't he say, I believe, I forgot where that is. Uh, he he prefers, uh, he doesn't prefer the sacrifice. He doesn't prefer the, 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 the sacrifice. He prefers a, a heart that's right with him, a, a one that is right with him, one that pleases him in the manner that he looks for. This man right here <clears throat> is showing us when the Lord saves you, he, he seals you until the day he comes back for you, okay? What you give back is your life. You surrender your life and you position yourself before the one who healed you, before the one who delivered you, before the one as we see now in moments to come who saves your soul, who says your soul now has a RSVP to come into the holiness that is my heaven. That you will partake, okay, as joint heirs with Christ in the new kingdom that will be established, okay? Where there will be no leprosy. There'll be no suffering of any kind, okay? One day eternal with the Lord, okay? 
he realized that he had to when in his turning it was his heart that was speaking to him and said i know where the response needs to be aimed at i know where the pro i know the gps coordinates to that which is in your heart that wants to respond back and the gps coordinates aimed at jesus christ we get saved by jesus we need to live a life that is that models jesus christ and that pleases jesus christ and it brings glory to the name of jesus christ and it brings honor and glory to the father who sent jesus christ and we do that by the holy spirit who educates us in our mind day in and day out. And that education gets filed in our heart and it becomes part of our spiritual DNA. And we slowly transform from the nine who decided to go back to the one that says, no, I'm turning because I have realized I have replayed. And now I realize that I have to replay. I mean, I have to repay. So realize plus uh, uh, replay equaled repay. I owe a debt I cannot pay back, but I can do one thing in my payment back, and that is surrender my all. All God asks is surrender our heart to him so that he can take over through the Holy Spirit, okay, and he can gain glorious moments like this, okay? Now, uh, it said that he... And it wasn't a soft boy, a soft voice. He praised it out open. There's no looking around to see, well, the homie's gonna be watching, or you know, you know, I I really don't want to be this connected with like a Jesus person or a Christian. Uh, let me make sure. Let me see who's who's around. Anybody around? Okay, not here my glory, glory. No. When Jesus turns your life around. You shouldn't be concerned about nobody on earth with regards to being connected to Christ. What you should be concerned about is having Christ use you to connect them to Christ. That is what this man was doing at this moment. Because I'm pretty sure there were some folks in that midst that needed to hear this moment. Okay? How many people in the midst of your life need to hear a, re, a, a, a turn back uh, and, and bring God glory moment. We, we talk a lot about all the stuff in the world, all the gossip, all the juiciness, all the vain stuff before God. It's worthless. Okay? I believe it's Philippians 4, 1 through 4, or something like that. It tells you what should be our conversations. Okay? We should be in conversation about one thing and one thing only. And that is the greatness of God in Christ through the Holy Spirit in our lives right now. Transforming our mind, helping us to respond to these challenges that I have right now. You know, mentally, medically, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in the family, in the community, in my, in my house, in my marriage, at my job, in my finances. You know, just overall in life. Uh, you know, responding to this in his loving peace and with his joy that people can see that glow that shining of the light of his glory okay that's what needs to be going on and this man decided to have to become a one-man choir okay start a church revival in christ and be the praise conductor praise leader and, and get his praise and worship on and give his testimony before the world have you given your testimony before the world as a christian have you given that praise and worship and moment to the Lord that has affected others in a way that draw them to Christ? Because anybody that was there that knew he was a leper, okay, and now he's coming back cleansed, that's glory. It's just like the lame man in Acts 3 that held along to Peter and John, and the people just infectious, they became so infectious with the moment, they started praising and glorifying God. Do people look up to God? And when they see you and, and, and there's a there's a hallelujah, there's a thankful moment. There, there's an energy that comes out from you, a power that comes out from you that overshadows, overwhelms them. And all they can do is lift themselves up to the Lord, seeing how the Lord is greatly working in your life. Well, this is what this man was about, okay? You know, and he was thankful. 
And remember, we're talking about being thankful. This leper was being thankful for God's giving him another day, another opportunity, okay? His faithfulness all along when he was not faithful, okay? His blessings of love, mercy, forgiveness, okay? Healing, okay? And, and the strength to get by from one day to another, suffering as he was, okay? He was thankful for his goodness and love. He was thankful for his help. He was thankful for the victory he just seen in his life and the deliverance that he just seen from the worst moment of his life. The Lord has taught me that every, I only got a few minutes here, every human being is a leper. Before God, we are a spiritual leper. We have an incurable disease called sin. Okay, and when Jesus said at the cross, it is finished, he provided the cure, the vaccine for that leprosy right now. Okay, it's not we get an injection, we need another one, we need a booster shot. He provided the vaccine for our leprosy in the spirit right now. Okay, and the opportunity is not guaranteed tomorrow. That's why these 10 recognize that. Okay, it's not guaranteed later. Okay. It's not guaranteed a minute after this this I go off the air. It's guaranteed now, okay? We may not all be here the next time around, okay? By faith, a leper today, a spiritual leper today can be cleansed and see the illness fall off. You can have peace with God if you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior right now. Recognizing that your leprosy of sin, okay, uh, your, your your rap sheet of sin that amounted to you being a, a spiritual leper before God, it can fall off right now if you just call upon the name above all names and say, you know what, Lord? I see Pastor Joseph. Lord, take the pastor out. I see Joseph. He was a spiritual leper. He was a physical, I mean, a spiritual leper all his life up until the point somewhere in his past where you now have him here as a testimony speaking about how spiritual leprosy can just fall off instantaneously when you call upon the name above all names. Is there going to be some bumps along the way, some challenges, some tough times? Yes, but your leprosy will be gone once you say, Jesus, I hear that knock once too many times. I'm going to do as the 10 lepers. Come on in. Master, Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, come on in and save me. And that's what he will do. Okay, that's step one. Then you need teachers around you, a pastor over you. You need the body of Christ to be connected to. And day by day, the Holy Spirit will teach you about the decision you make. And what's up ahead? Great things are up ahead. Yes, challenges, but great things. Because in those challenges, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? So uh, you can have that cure right now. But when you get it, can you do as this leopard did? Okay? And bless the Lord. At all times, in thought, speech, and deed, in your walk, in your lifestyle. Is your, can your lifestyle be one that praises the Lord? Okay? And in praising Him, it draws people not to you, but to Jesus in you. Because they've seen that leprosy fall off. All that bad ways and bad thoughts and bad lifestyle that you had is now gone. You're not doing the Saturday night creeping and the Sunday sleeping. You're sleeping on Saturdays and you're up on Sundays. You, you, got, you got a new turnaround, okay? There's a newness about you, and yeah, there are gonna be some folks that will watch the homies and homies. They ain't gonna like you no more. So what? Let God use you to affect their leprosy. Okay, that's what it's about. Each one, reach one. Okay. To the Christians, before I, I close, are we being thankful to Jesus? Do we give Him glory that He deserves? He healed us of that leprosy. What have we given back? Have we totally surrendered like this gentleman here? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as we draw to a close here that the body of Christ, who may have heard, can see that there may be a, an area of weakness that you need to help them with and that you do, Father, because if you could heal us of spiritual leprosy, sins of past, present, and future. Yes, we have some that we deal with now, but you healed us of that. You cured us of that. We just need to turn around and come to you. Help them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And to those that accepted Christ, Father, in the name of Jesus, give them 
this leverage moment to turn around for the rest of this night up until next Sunday at 5 o'clock and give you the praise and glory that you deserve and seek to do more for you. That's my prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus. My name is Pastor Joseph. You can reach me at Pastor Joseph uh, uh, dot H uh, T H L M the Lighthouse Ministries at gmail.com should you want to comment or reach out to me for prayer or any other assistance uh, with God's grace let us all be back here next Sunday at 5 o'clock California time I love you all um, and I pray that we all rise to where God wants us to in Christ in Jesus name Amen